Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi. On location again, Jonathan. Where are you? I was I'm... like, are you up in the annex with Anne and Margo? Like, what are we doing? Yeah, exactly. It's why, well, I'm not even going to go there. But um, this is uh, in Chicago and I have filmed from here before, but it's always tricky when you constantly move locations to figure out the right lighting and the sound and everything. Some of you may remember last year, this is the location where I thought the best lighting was on a toilet. <laughs> And oh, it, yes. it worked so well, the lighting was great and everything until I like bent over to pick up my water and it revealed that I was indeed filming from a bathroom. But you know, we're scrappy and we make it work. <laughs> oh, I just got a text from Ann Jensen as we sent this because I found an article and I was I was like, oh, send it to Frank. And she's like, he's in Hawaii. And I'm like, isn't Doug Rosano there? I just had that image of Doug Rosano on the beach passing Frank Carroll. And the... That's right. Doing a double take, like, wait, no, we're going to ignore it. Yeah, we're on vacation. No wearing the same, wearing the same attire, I'm sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jonathan, I thought we'd start with a little fun skating Christmassy show and tell. I so, love that. So, um, actually, we I know that the the popular story is that we met because we met in Boston, and while that's true, I we actually became friends because I stalked you on Facebook because you were wearing <laughs> this shirt. Um, Yes, that my friend Vanessa made for us when we attended Skate America in 2013. And I was like, I need to be friends with this person. He seems funny. So then that's, I manifested it. And you sent me a shirt and it says on the back, triple toe, double toe, and then a fall off of the end of it, which was absolutely unnecessary and uncalled for. Uncalled for. <laughs> The ba that was about Michelle Kwan falling off the combo in Nashville. Yes. So it's a famous quote. We got a lot of people stop us when we wore those. That's about as kitschy as I get. Normally, I just wear those blazers or like super warm sweaters. Yeah, you but look this like time... one of those opera gays with those blazers at a skating event. Like, who are you trying to impress, girl? You I'm know? trying to stay warm. <laughs> like, I need the layers. <laughs> okay. So I also went Christmas shopping yesterday. Oh, and because I have seen your ornament collection for years, Jonathan, it is a thing. It's a bunch of fat people on the Christmas tree. Like it's a specific whoever the designer is. And I'm sure it's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. But like I got my own decoration. So like allow me to have my own parade. Okay. Yes. Yes. I won't rain on it, Dave. <laughs> Do you see? And they're skating. Okay. Now, yes. I don't really like the skates because like, why are the skates like an inch wide? But because um, well also those are those like old blades you used to see in those like history like i feel like axel paulson skated on those with the elf yes. toe in the front yeah but does anyone else have any cute skating decorations i am very picky about my skating decorations like i if it doesn't look real see these are like reproductions of like of antiques it's, so it's nostalgia it's like yes. a nod when everyone was out on black ice in norway but um, skating, because I looked for some, I have a cute little mouse, I've got like mm -hmm. a fun one that um, Barney's made, but like, it's hard to find cute ones that aren't plastic and yes. cheesy. Yeah. I see nothing wrong with spending $50 on something that looks nice, Jonathan. Um, no. <laughs> also, how about this reindeer boy with the candy cane? I mean, Jonathan, this needs to be on your tree. <laughs> you have nothing cute. You have the South Park boys. What about yeah, the I sweet do. boy when you were like a little person? I was in- Don't identify. I don't identify with that sweet child. I identify with the wisecracking cartoon character. Making, making a snowman. Don't mm -hmm. you want to build a snowman? You know, like <laughs> however that song goes. I do. I actually do. Or These are nice, Dave. Yes, how about this little boy in a sled, Jonathan? You know, I mean- Price tag included. <laughs> $18, Justin on sled, you know. Worth it, worth it. Yes, I just- Now, did you have a Michelle Kwan ornament or a Christy Yamaguchi so ornament? So I do, but the tree isn't up yet. I'm getting the tree today because I get a real Oops. tree and it's, December is crazy. Like we have reviews coming up. I'm not feeling so festive until we write out that mid-year review, you know? And then we, there's just a lot of, <laughs> Uh, projects and stuff and shows that we have and the Grand Prix goes. I don't usually put up my tree until after the Grand Prix final. But I do have yeah. another Michelle Kwan thing that Michael Buckley sent me last year when he was cleaning out his, yes. before he moved. And he just right. posted about how he's had a, he moved a year ago to Denver. So I got, I never had this. And I feel like I was missing I out my whole saw life. I that, yeah. Now, Michelle never skated to Furley's, so that bothers me on a Hallmark level. So maybe yeah. Michelle could skate to Furley's on one of her Instagram videos because she posted that and she the likes exact to create. outfit for the yes. sole purpose of selling those snow globes. Yes, yeah. Michelle, come on, the eBay price will go way up, okay? It probably already is. 
I have that little ice skating mouse with the scarf that I posted is also, and it plays Skater's Waltz. And you're oh. like, okay, it, what little did we know it should be playing Wicked Games or Moulin Rouge yes. or something like that if it's authentic. Oh, wow. how the time has. So, and I'm sure the person who does the timestamps is going to be like, Dave's on a tangent again, you know. But anyway, <laughs> these are skating related because if you remember when I was sick and couldn't find my passport, I went through my whole uh, apartment and I was going through closets and things and like I've had this box of skating magazines that I got from Louis De Cesare, who's Louis on FSU who was posting reviews crankily long before <laughs> I did he's kind of like my older brother but I found this thing and it's an issue of skating magazine from April 1958 and they discuss sectionals wow Frank Carroll was fifth is this <laughs> Which you know, and it was called the Roger F. Turner Trophy. No idea why. But no. what happened to Frank Carroll at this championship? Don't get me started on Roger. I'll tell you what. <laughs> well, this Edwin Z-S-C-H-A-U from Princeton, New Jersey, knocked Frank Carroll out. And this mm -hmm. is, if you notice, this is relevant because Gregory Kelly was first. Carl from the Skating Club of Boston. Then someone from the Skating Club of New York. Then Frank Mukian from the Skating Club of Boston. Now, skate, now, Frank is from the Skating Club of Worcester, and if you've ever seen those documentaries, he always whines about, he talks about when he whined about being from Worcester and not from Boston. Yeah, he would have yeah even in your interview with him, that he was talking about his coach, who, Miravel, who was just yeah. like, get over it. Yes. Stop it. So yeah. I think this may be the time. This yeah. with lovely Carol Heiss and some very... Um, dapper man on the cover i don't really know who that is but buzz cut yeah <laughs> these are these must be lewis got these from a david mitchell they all like signed he wrote his signature on the back this and kept them in pristine condition this man loved his figure skating and yeah. interesting is that people who get skating magazine at some point in 1964 it came from the u.s and canada was there like some sort of a block judging magazine like North situation american skating club yeah yes. okay and so i thought this was funny because Tenley and Dick are on the cover, and Dick, they have a whole interview where he rants about skating and judging and things. Even then, even then. <laughs> yes. But someone wrote, okay, so John Shoemaker, um, who is an activist in the skating world since 1939, he has a wife who is a world we all did figure <laughs> and world dance judge, and two daughters, Susan and Jane. Maybe Susan and Jane can fill us in on this life because he wrote an article called are your jumps cheating you and he, that's an amazing name for an article in 2018 right? okay Sk have you ever written like if you've ever read skating magazine it's not nearly this interesting so no. he wrote to an ardent fan of the sport nothing is more disconcerting than watching skaters mop up the ice in program after program trying to execute jumps which are far beyond their ability it is all very well to imitate the celebrated moves of top competitors, but not to extend the, the reaching further than one's own capacity. A qualifying competition is certainly not the place to do either. Skate the jumps clean or don't bother the audience or the judges. And you know, John... Wow! When Times have changed. <laughs> when we're discussing these mini nationals, I think that it's very appropriate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, or we're like, oh, he completely wiped out, but it was fully rotated, so he will totally win. <laughs> You're like, Just wow, so you know, this has changed. These people really had opinions in 1964. This was a... Yeah. And you could get this all for 50 cents, I have to tell you. There are, Dick Button wrote these yeah, books. Hey, that was a big, big, big cost. <laughs> I know, I... Debbie, so, Debbie now, Wilkes I, is on the cover of these? These have just been, like, in a box in my closet. I need to in. Well, so in my own version, I went back and on um, Amazon found that old ice dancing manual. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it's very old, and I don't have it on me, but it was, like, a taking you through the history of ice dance, and then it would literally also, and we will go through this together, was, like, 1962 Pacific Coast sectionals, fifth place ice dance team from America and you're like and you follow this trajectory mm -hmm. of all these teams but it's really when all these patterns were first developed so it's a dry read okay but it's it's very informative about the patterns and the players and for me Dave I could not stop laughing at these color photos what a tragic time for ice dance like those like late 80s were because like to see Julin with like the wedgie and gold sparkles you're like oh my gosh this is incredible so i kind of love going back and revisiting all that you know, memorabilia there's like an article about tenley albright i mean and 
I don't know if it was Elin, if Elin's her oldest, but Elin did a beautiful scratch spin outdoors the other day. It really had nice blurring. I thought Uncle Dick Button would love it when I saw it the other day. Yeah. Two snaps for Elin. You know, two snaps up, Jonathan. She's she's brilliant. So obviously the whole family must be quick and brilliant and talented, right? Yes. So, yeah, but I was just looking at it. I was like, oh, what fun. I I saw results from Astra Burka from 1964, 65 and Petra Burka. I was like, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. There they are. There they are. Maribel competed against Laurent at sectionals and the singles and she didn't make it out in 1958 it important things but let's move along to the <laughs> things you actually came here for but you know what i thought that was fun and if you like old skating um you know what it reminds me of dave i right. thought um after the grand prix megan took over for like the isu instagram stories or whatever and she was doing cute things where she like was like raised asking. her you know, we did. Look at our girl just going out. She was supposed to come on on our show for the Grand Prix Final, but she is going to come on. She offered for either Russian or um, Japanese nationals. I think she would be really appropriate for Russia, right, for the views. I think she'd really enjoy that, right? That would incite so many impassioned disagreements. But she was doing a cute thing where she would ask Rika, like, who invented the axle? Do you know? And then she's talking to Mishin, and she because she said... Um, she was so sweet. She goes, Elisabetta, you have one of the nicest triple Lutzes I've ever seen. And Elisabetta looked guarded around her. Mm-hmm. And she was like, do you know who invented the Lutz? And she was like, absolutely not. And then she goes over to M- Mishin and Mishin is like, I do. It was Mr. Lutz. <laughs> <laughs> like, hello. And it was like a really funny thing. And so I think this is an important part of the skating lesson is to, well, to revisit. Um, I saw the results from the 58 Worlds. They have like all the ordinals printed. And Carol Heiss won. Ina Bauer herself was fourth. Now, why is it called the Ina Bauer? Like, why not just a Bauer? You know, some things like, why is the Axel named after his first name? Right. And then, okay, so I was watching... Yeah, could you imagine if we were freaking out over a triple Paulson? Yeah. <laughs> it, may, it just doesn't sound right. Yeah. Also, um, in housekeeping, the Jutta Mueller uh, documentary for her 90th birthday, I don't know, did you watch it? Because I know you know German. I don't know. Yeah, I started to, and I was a little, it was a little tired, but they just released a version this morning that has English subtitles. Good, because I saw that, and I'm going to put it um, in the comments below, because we all need to watch it. It looks amazing. It's like what we, I need. It's what yeah. we need for Frank Carroll. Jonathan, Frank needs to let us do this. I think we yeah. need to have him at the ballet bar with Linda, because they had a net poach and Katarina Witt, who were together, and they were, like, in Uta's office, I think. And then they went to the ballet studio, and, like, Uta was, like, telling them what to do. It was hilarious. I mean, and with the Jans Hoffman and with Gabby, yes. you know, we have our own thoughts about maybe their style and approach, but it was so insular also, because what access did they have to to these other training things? That woman is a force of nature. So yes. I, I was really excited Very to. Very beautiful, just, you know. Oh, and, yeah. And they Elegant, seem to love classic. her. They have like a real like respect for her. In a it's, it, that doesn't seem put on. It, yeah. She seems to balance nurture and tough environment. As so. only like a communist coach could. You know, like you know. Yeah. I always find because that the female really, Oksana Bayul owes Jans Hoffman, Jans Hoffman, Yuta Müller. So the only reason Oksana has that gold medal is because of the Yuta Müller. Well, you know what <laughs> I always like about Jan and why I respect him. And by the way. There's a Jan Hoffman that subscribed to our oh, email list. I keep pluralizing it. It's just Jan. I it's keep saying Jan. Jan's. Yeah, I'm it's sorry, Jan Hoffman. He subscribed to our TSL email list. And I want to send him a message to be like, are you the Jan Hoffman? Is that weird? You know, like I was like a stalker. You come on the show. Yeah. <laughs> because in the beginning, I would get like an email every time someone signed up. And I saw like, I got a thing on my phone. It said like, Jan Hoffman. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Well, that's like on Facebook. Isn't somebody Axel Paulson on Facebook? And I was like, wow. <laughs> but I'm like, it could be Jan. I don't know. Maybe. So, yeah, that Pasha by Yule person isn't the real one. <laughs> yeah, turns out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Jan, so Jan Hoffman, the interesting thing there, why I respect him, is that we always talk about how skaters tend to support the ones who are like them. So Tara, you know, went after, Adel- like, supported Adelina, and that wasn't a right. surprise to us. Well... Jan Hoffman lost to Robin Cousins, not just because of Carlo, but because the way the judges did it because of his artistic mark. Because Jan was such a technical skater and the Frau was not known for her beautiful um, artistry of her technique. So I always thought that it was really interesting that he consistently has always voted for the more artistic skater because that's what he lacked. And I thought that that means that he has a lot of integrity. 
Yeah, we're going to take a quick yeah. turn here. But like, the, I mean, to me, one of his mm -hmm. most, you know, known decisions mm -hmm. was that call for Oksana mm -hmm. over Nancy. But to me, it wasn't even so much artistry. It was that one, because Oksana is mm -hmm. a beautiful artistic skater, more so in that short program than in mm -hmm. the long program. But Nancy was so, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but it was just so American. It was stiff. That uh, that and it was so um, like a Disney show than mm. than something else, and I could see someone raised in a European sentiment, even if they weren't the most artistic skater, really rejecting that approach. But he also voted for Michelle over Tara, so he consistently two yeah. Olympics in a row did that. So anyway, he's in the documentary. He speaks. I'm glad that we get to see. But it was it was like a sweet film, 90 minutes, and you get to see Claudia Leisner, who looks beautiful now, by the way. But she does that same scratch spin with the butt out that Katarina Bitt did for years. And it was it made my heart like sing. So I just You're just like and tuck. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So yeah. anyway, as we move along, these on this show, but you know what? This is for Christmas and uh, Hanukkah. It's a variety and... pack of exciting holiday nationals and yes. tidbits. <laughs> so I thought that it was actually really, I was really excited when I saw them all together. And the other thing that, so if any of our German um, viewers could let us know, because it's really impossible to Google this, but if you've ever Wikipedia this, because I was looking at how um, Katerina and Annette Poach seem so friendly, and I was like, you know, they must have trained with each other at some point when Katerina was young. So Annette was married to Katerina Witt's brother. But I was trying to find out if Katerina Witt's... I didn't know that. Had... Okay, so Katerina Witt's brother um, married Annette Poach, and they had a daughter, and their daughter skated with Robin Silkoe before Eliona. <laughs> yes! Fascinating. And it talks about how in this, how Yuta helped Aliona with her relationship with Ingo because, and like Yuta coached Ingo and he's in the film. And also, but the reason I couldn't Google any of this because it's impossible because Katarina Witt's brother's first name is Axel. So if you try to Google anything with Axel and Witt, you'll just find all like generics. Right, right. So, Even if you put it in quotes, I say yeah, to you like you don't know how to use the internet. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't find anything. So if anyone knows about Axel Witt and did he skate, I would be fascinated to know. Is there more to this family? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, moving along, I thought it was just interesting little tidbits yeah. for these nationals. Insular that... this world. It's very insular. Yeah. Wow. Get this. Annette Poach's second husband, also a skater, and he adopted um, he adopted the child, so the child has the last name like Rosenbach or whatever, who skated with him. Okay. Uh, also first name Axel. Just saying, like, Annette, really? <laughs> Enough. Annette, yeah. <laughs> you couldn't, like, all these people marry other skaters? Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe Utah told them all what to do, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure Notice she... no one no one named him Sao Cao, because we <laughs> saw those Sao <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, well, let's start with the French Nationals, because it was, I think, the event why everyone is here. Actually, no, pause. Let's just let's preview our Russian nationals because there has been a lot of news going on. So, um, first thing is that Elizaveta Tukhtimisheva is in the hospital with pneumonia. Um, mm -hmm. So, that's obviously quite serious. Uh, my sister had pneumonia once when we were kids. Uh, so, I imagine she will be out of the Europeans because you think like how much time it would take to fully you know get over pneumonia and then get back and i think well, it's... And she she is building the right kind of momentum right now yeah. so to risk it would be i think such a mistake like you have earned your mm -hmm. seat at the table i believe with yeah. with these three performances and um i think you don't need to push it because to go out to europeans and make mm -hmm. a less than impression mm -hmm. could really deter you so, I think more so than not showing up. So I think she's going to world. I would just send her to worlds. I would have her do competitions beforehand, you know, as long as she And it can... was interesting because people were like, oh, I guess she's out of worlds. And I was like, in no. what? What? No. She, I mean, come on. She's, she has pneumonia. Like, and was... there were actually like pictures of her. Like it looked like they were visiting her in the hospital. And, you know, obviously we wish her well. And you don't want someone like, you don't want someone to mess around with pneumonia and come back too soon. So, Prematurely. Yeah. Yeah. So I also think like this kind of uh, really opens the door for Evgenia Medvedeva uh, to be able to um, do well. well. Yeah. yeah. And I think maybe 
this will get her to the Europeans. And obviously, if she does well, if the Europeans could get her to the world, I don't know if, you know, she's, you know, I, but I was thinking that they'll probably make the European team, Zagitova, Samodurova, and Evgenia, uh, at the, um, at the Europeans, and, um, she, I, we, things that we know. She has a new short program to Tosca. Last week, we weren't allowed to say it. This week, we are. Uh, it was... <laughs> Doug Haw saw her. She did a clean long. He said he worked with her on her combination. Spinny made her do it for him a couple of times. He fixed it. He said so. I bet he did. Yeah. yeah. So we better see that that combination spin is fixed. Otherwise, we can all yell at Doug Haw collectively together <laughs> and blame him um, single handedly for her spin error. <laughs> he, okay. He called me. I was going at the mall the other day, and he was I'm so Jersey. I was going to the mall, and yeah, he called me. And he, was like, he was like, "I saw." Evgenia, and she did a clean long for me, and you know, and I talk and talk to her, and I'm like, you're a new skater, and she said she's skating for herself, and she's been skating well the last month, and they had said that she was looking good before France, and then she kind of got stiff and reverted to, you know, as is as is happening, you have yeah. to know you're only going to get a certain percentage of all that improvement at this early stage once you're actually yeah. putting it under competitive lights, yeah. you know. So she's been skating, well, she said for about a month, and she's really happy, and she has a new short program by Mishigi to Tosca, and she's going to wear a gold dress. So that's what we know. So, so a couple of um, initial responses mm -hmm. I have to that. I'm glad she's changing it, because sometimes you just need to take all you've learned and apply mm -hmm. it to a new thing. I'm interested that the camp was like, yeah, go for it. Do Misha G's choreography instead she's of friends, David. You know, she's friends with him, and David has been busy doing um, the Javier Fernandez show with Sandra. So I think that that might have been... The Gracias España tour? <laughs> yes, the Gracias España. Whatever his... Okay. Well, that's an interesting tour because they had like... Um, they have uh, Plashenko Jeff was Buttle for the, was the first... Right? Jeff Buttle. Um, and it was like Sandra was like, oh, you know, like when I was... I talked to her and she's like, oh, I'm just putting together this little show, you know. They've never done one in Spain before, so we're just putting it together. Meanwhile, they have Plushenko performing. They have, like, Yuka Sato. Um, they have pulled out every stop, and it's like an epic performance. You yeah. know, Yuna is going. They're going to work together tomorrow and Monday. Yuna apparently has been working hard at getting her skating back at home, and she's, you know, excited. She's bringing back an old number, and Sandra's going to touch it up, and... I'm like, uh huh, just a little show. You just, you know, yeah, just a to little ditty on the weekends. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, Sandra's like, I went to a flamenco performance and I'm still, I'm feeling so excited by it. I was like, oh. But still, don't let that inspire you for too many more tango programs just yet, please. <laughs> like, just let Sandra it. Sandra can do whatever she wants. You know what, Sandra? You know what? Of course she can, yeah. She did the short that Evgenia did, but then they never worked on it again. So it didn't get yeah, its full... Yeah, it morphed away from what it yeah, could have Yeah, because remember when we first saw it at the test gate, it had a lot of potential, but then it just, as mm -hmm. she got more stressed for competition, turn. and it, yeah. yeah. And so what I'm intrigued by, as I am recalling, and I don't... should have, see, sorry to build you off, and you should have seen the dress that Sandra wanted. She wanted those, like, long white gloves, like, 19, I guess, 40s kind of pin-up kind of this kind of sweet charity kind of that yeah. they used to dress like in the skating shows like it had a certain um vibe whole, that she was going thing. for yeah yeah and then Evgenia and her mom were like no and they didn't do the dress situation so there's just yeah so you can take the no i'm not even gonna say it. okay so um but uh that was a joke only so the thing about her doing tosca that does interest me aside from the operatic connection is that i don't recall her skating to full-blown no. masterworks before and and people will argue that some of that music was classical but it was it was not by definition it so was I'm a... it was imitative of classical music you know yeah it's like new agey soundtracky yeah. kinds of stuff and um or filmy, so something a real old war horse. So it's a fit. It's definitely a fit. Her doing. Tosca. Yeah, I think to to see her under that kind of, and it's a heavy. If she choose, depending on which part she choose, and I think that grand heaviness may help her. So let's see what happens. And she needs uh, to get off. I was you. thinking that obviously the long would be the better choice, but if she gets off to a good start in the short, it'll carry her through. So and maybe I don't know. And this is me venturing mm -hmm. out of. Mm -hmm. What I can, I know, I'm just speculating. Does does somehow Mishigi help with this kind of 
nationalism of Eastern European, of oh. former Soviet era, versus David. They love him. Uh, they Sandra. love Misha in Russia. Too. Yeah, I think it's buying a lot of, it's a good... Um, and he's a good friend a good to her. PR. He seems like he's like yeah. a fun friend for everyone, so it's probably a great... Um, sure. Well, and so now Brian can go to Russian nationals because... Hanyu is not competing at Japanese nationals because he couldn't be in two places at once. Uh, so Brian and Tracy, I think, will be going uh, with her to Russia. So that has to be an extra added boost. So I think that that just injects a new energy. Um, I yeah. mean, we know that she's been working double axle triple loop, uh, I think triple sow cow triple loop. So she's working a lot of new um, combinations and techniques. So I think um, it'll be interesting to see kind of her skating evolve and, you know, maybe get the second act. I think she's at the point where she's trying to skate clean. And then next year we could see her trying to go for the big um, GOE. Then the my question to you is the way that Russia does their nationals and that it's an intermingling in the placements of junior and senior, right? So does that hurt when some of your world team members may have not even been on the podium at nationals because yeah, a couple of young Kimi guns? About that. I mean, how yeah. much... It was, I mean, How much does that motivate? Because I understand it from a motivation standpoint. Everybody is fighting, and um, but but I don't know what what that may do for a fourth a fourth or fifth place Yevgenia to still be on the world team or something. Yeah. But my only issue is is that how are we going to really? I don't think if if it, they never judge it. So it's I don't see a good from it, and here's why: because they do not. Um, usually judge components accurately at any nationals and it winds up skewing the results and it always favors uh, the technical elements as opposed to the complete package and I right. think um, that skating should really reward um, and in order for a proper ranking and then so are you going to attack the up-and-coming junior like a Trusova and give her the components that she deserves Right. In order to bolster the ones you have that are skating well, yeah, it, it would be a minefield, I think. You know, like, how do you do that accurately? And, how, you know, it's just, it, are you going to reward, you know, the quads with huge GOEs, if, if, even if they're not necessarily deserving, but the fact that you were rewarding them because they did it, you know, like, it's a whole thing. Right. I think we'll have a lot to discuss, I think, yeah. for yeah. Um, Russian nationals. So um, I'm curious to see how it all plays out. I and have there been any updates with Kolyada? Because I know he was, he was, I don't know if they said hospitalized or he was definitely ill with yeah, something as well. Yeah, he has like sinusitis, but then it, like, he took a picture, like, with stuff. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know if that was de-swellant. Like, sometimes, like, the ENTs will shove up stuff up there to okay. get things numbed, but um, before they scope or something. And I was wondering, but, like, was it a doctor? Were they scope? Yeah, what, what's going on there? And also, I don't know if you... Do you read the translated Russian articles that are posted on the web, like with FS gossips and stuff that they do? Sometimes I do. And I'll tell you what, because it's so clearly like a Google Translate yeah. type of situation, it can really alter the meaning of what you're reading sometimes. So I kind of try not to do it so, anymore because it gets skewed what I, I'm taking away. I'm not sure. I've typed with the people. I'm never sure if they're Russian or not. But I, when, this thing is that um, I think it's an interesting, um, you get a general sense is the way I take mm -hmm. it. I don't take it like direct quotes. Um, interesting thing is that, um, one, they talk about weight in the Russia things all the time. There is this, um, article with Panenkova, which was like horrifying to read. Yeah. Um, the reporter was asking her if she, um, has a sign on her fridge not to eat, by the way. And they like, yes, yes. So Could you imagine like People Magazine interviewing some U.S. skater and asking that same question? Oh my gosh. It's just like yeah. interesting. Like I'm... Obviously, our history, I'm very, you know, aware. Anyway, um, I think another thing that was interesting, though, what I've got is, but about Kolya Daha, they're all openly referring to him as a, as a head case in Russia. Like, they're literally asking all of the coaches, like, why does this talented skater make so many mistakes? So it's, they're very um, aware of it. And I wonder if it's almost And like blunt. It, there's blunt. a bluntness into that reporting that one wonders if you keep telling him he's such a head case, which I'm sure he's aware that he he's aware of what's happening also. Yeah. Like, does that compound and solidify that? Like, mm -hmm. oh, well, I can't because I'm a head case. I don't know what kind of um, facilities they have in order to kind of help get someone out of that. If they view sports psychologists in the same way that they do in North America, I don't know. So if, if he doesn't compete at Russian nationals, it may help him because if he has a bad outing, he may not earn a top three spot to go to Europe. I know. It, just, it kind of pushes him through and then... Um...
I think and I think he's earned it. I would send him Aliyev, you know, and maybe Samar. Samar, yeah, it's, it's going to be there. I think without question, unfortunately, because he's my least favorite of the three. But actually, I don't at this moment. I'm not. Well, Voronov could try to. Uh, yeah. What would make me sad is if Kolyada or Aliyev missed out. Yeah, because those those two, I think, and we were talking about like as judges show you what what kinds of skatings they what kind of skaters they like to reward. I think skaters like Aliyev and Kolyada just epitomize all the things I like about skating. So it would be really nice to see them atop of that podium, but it's going to be hard. Yeah, and have you noticed that Ilyinik and Soloviev like are doing that like that like kitschy thing that you do on Instagram where you're like. Should we compete together? You know, and right. You know, and I think that that's been bandied about. I don't know if that's serious or not, or if it's just keeping their um, status Relevant. up for shows yeah. and the relevance. Because she also has things coming up with that academy that I think you know Julia spearheads. And right, it, it's interesting to see you know what will happen there. That would certainly be exciting and up the competitiveness in Russian ice dance. I think we'd all like to see it. Um, always like to watch her perform and you know i think she's certainly capable of doing more than shows to the nutcracker so i would right you know like to see that very fascinated baby plashenko are you following him yet he was on like now a... i'm following him now are following you fascinated him. he has that boy that looks like a twin and they have the same haircut in the ring he was on some late night show it looked like you know the russian jimmy fallon like what yeah they have created a product, <laughs> and it is flying off the shelf. Yeah, they really have. I'm glad that you're following. I was really like up getting a little upset that you weren't. Okay. Following for a while. I was like, no. When I tell you something, like you need to go follow him. Like, listen, listen to Dave Lee, everyone. Okay. <laughs> like I am. So, but the thing I also wonder, where's Plushenko's other son? Do you notice that we never see him? Like, no, because I actually didn't know he had another one. Yes, with the first wife. Yes, son. With the first one, we uh, never see that kid. He must maybe be around Maybe she has custody, and she's like, you're not making a media circus out of this. Yeah. And also, like, what was the whole thing, like, when, like, Plushenko, Horkina, and Kabayeva were, like, in the Russian government for a while? Like, And why did Putin do that? Like, why were they put in? There must be some very interesting, like, political reason that he put well, all these Michelle celebrities Michelle was in. given that, like, token post. No, but, the, like, we didn't send her to Congress. We had her, like, talk to other um, countries about falling and getting back up. You know, right. like, why were they there? But they all had, like, really horrible attendance records. But they were in different political parties. So, like, Plushenko yeah, was in, like... Yeah, I remember a like, bit about Horkina, but I don't yeah. remember Plushenko also having that. But Yeah, so if anyone It's a can, different world. I know nothing about it. If anyone can, like, explain that, that would be... I was interesting. Like, what was like the motivation behind that? When like or, that was interesting. Like, they all got into politics around two thousand and seven, so it seemed coordinated. But they weren't all yeah. the same party, so that was interesting too. So mm, okay. anyway, family fun for the yeah <laughs> things to think about. But let's start with James and Cipres because Jonathan, they are. It looks like they are really peaking. Um, yeah, are they peaking too soon? What I know, is... I was hoping you weren't going to say it. And the coach, she was even like, another perfect one or another clean one. And I was like, don't even say stuff like that. <laughs> well, I think it, they, look, they have to have a lot of confidence right now. They've certainly had a great fall. Remember she said that, she was like, oh, well, we, we were hoping to save that performance for Worlds. And now they've done it like three times. So right. good and for it's you. Something, I was really trying to think about the difference in the programs because it's an intriguing thing to have Guillaume choreographing and to have Charlie choreographing. Mm -hmm. I think the free is much more successful overall for a myriad of reasons. But what Charlie did so well with this is build an arc. Mm -hmm. What makes Morgan and uh, Vanessa so special, they, his wingspan, when he really owns it, and she's not short, mm -hmm. they own this size. They do two beautiful strokes, and they are on the other side of the arena. And it's such big skating, and the music is big, and they have left it with these huge, open, sweeping mm -hmm. patterns, and it just keeps building, and it just keeps building, and it just gets... It's just perfectly paced, I think. And it, it is really an epic program, not in the colloquial way we mm -hmm. always use the word epic now, but it truly is mm -hmm. a, a moment. And a, again, with that damn deduction. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's They'll super, figure it out. They, I know they, they keep trying it, it. Do you notice they try to like 
change that like she puts her pick in now and she unrolls like they're gonna work on this they have months i mean look. and i say it, that move is cool we have seen them do it before but there is like give us some bolero fun go to christopher dean or go back to charlie or whomever and be like hey can you just give us a couple days and can we just figure out a new move out of there to end it really dramatically i think there's something even cooler that could be made available to them that would appease the rules also so can sway and han beat them it's so hard to say without having seen them mm -hmm. because they, I think um, for all the reasons I just described, Morgan and Vanessa being so exceptional might be the shortcomings. <laughs> I didn't even do that on purpose mm -hmm. of Sway and Han because mm -hmm. their skating is a bit smaller. Their skating, their lifts are a bit, you know, closer. They're, it, it's just a less of a broad thing. They do have the magique, uh, Sway and yeah. Han, when they skate together, that connection. Precision and passion. And it's just, I think, uh, Vanessa and Morgan are just bigger. Yeah. And so it will be interesting to see, is that that fine? I'm you curious know, what the program is, because I would think normally, I would certainly give the nod for components and GOE to Sway and Han, but without seeing the program, you don't know. Um, right, right. I, I don't think that a redux version of Turned Up um, would be enough. You know, I think... No, that that... I don't think so either. And and they're, they are not... It needs um, to be inspired, you know, like the performance. And, yeah. yeah, and I think they would always give an inspired performance, but also you never quite know what the jumps will do. You, you know what I mean? I like... think they should just do side-by-side -side double axles because I went back and was watching some of their practice videos and she was not hitting the triple sow cow in um in in the practice in vancouver at uh pyeongchang so i right. like i'm wondering what you know that yeah. success rate will be it'd be interesting remember if they work they haven't worked with aliona but i would be curious if they did if she could help with the sow cows because she had to relearn hers so right because that's right. kind of the only thing that sui and han don't really do super well you know and, they... and just for me personally because mm -hmm. you know they are one of my favorite teams of all time mm -hmm. but it's in the lifts, it lacks a little impact based merely on the aesthetic and the yeah. size matchup. It, it doesn't yeah. create the powerful moment it does when Morgan and Vanessa do it, especially with the dismount right yeah. on the music. And I mean, one. that's the thing so. that they can't fix, but I was thinking the jumps they can and the program. Um, so it'll be an interesting matchup. I think that they could certainly win the short program by several points. They obviously have to be clean. Um, I just don't love the whole aesthetic. Uh, like, it's hard. A short program is it's either like, a big hit or just kind of eh for me. And I think that the Alanis Morissette is a right choice for them. It's in the- Yeah, I get why they chose it. I see yeah. why they thought like, this could be our thing. It's just, I don't know. I don't love the dress. I talked to her about it. She said that Guillaume really prefers the skirt. Um, I just think that she, her line, she's not the most, like she doesn't have the most classical balletic extensions. And I think that somehow, the... But the free leg gets really high, so it's interesting yeah. to me because it may not be always that pointed toe yeah. or the same kind of deportment. It's the but turnout she, in the when, yeah. But she can throw it way up there. Yeah. That when things are happening fast, you are like, wow, and that is accentuated by the pantsuit thing. Yeah. Now you know I love that girl so much. I do. In the gray and the long, there is a little bit of like a sparkle V in the back that almost makes it look like a bejeweled thong. But <laughs> love that. You know, it's depending on the camera angle. You are like, wait a minute. Um, but this one is the short program dresses a bit more like your Halloween costume idea. And I didn't know if it was almost Egyptian or in an appearance. And then of course you go uninvited and blah, blah, blah. But I think they, the packaging could be a little different. I just think because it shows off the Adeus skates, which are so boxy, and then like she kind of bends her leg at certain points when approaching the jump, I just get a bent leg from it, like on the skating skills. And to me, if you're competing in Sui and Han and she has such beautiful extension, I was like, mm, maybe I'll And make it pants. your thing. Own it. Yeah. I don't know anyone who could look that good in that kind of outfit. So wear it all the time. I don't yeah. think that there's any reason that a piece like the Alanis Morissette doesn't call for it as well. At least. Yeah. Aliona has them in every color. So, you know, yeah. borrow, call her up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Vanessa showed us her closet. She was showing us she has not a small collection. <laughs> but they're all in black. You know, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the kind of thing. So anyway, just an interesting thing. But I think they have to be very confident. I think they certainly have the confidence the momentum growing and it's interesting that they now have a little bit of a break before europeans i'm wondering if they have shows coming up if they would do 
Art on Ice because Aliona is seems to be do is doing um, Holiday on Ice, the new version of that. So I wonder if they would be doing Art on Ice. And they I, come on, they have got to be exhausted after that Grand Prix final win, and then flying and Vancouver to France. That is a tough time change. I mean, yeah. obviously, so are the Asian trips, but like to do that back to back. I mean, props to them because mm -hmm. that's a big. That's yeah, a big ask. But it would be interesting maybe if they did shows for a little bit to work, you know, performing and stuff like that because obviously they need a little bit of a mental and physical break because, look, they're not going to do the quad this year. Obviously, it's too far in the season and they're trying to stay healthy and consistent. And it wouldn't have been – it's not worth the risk in this in this uh, yeah. version of the rules. Yeah. But like you're saying, like, oh, now they can take it a little easy. What I do have to admire is that they could have taken – I mean, what did they win by? 18,000 yeah. points or something? They didn't have to go full out. And mm -hmm. they, they went full out every element, every ounce of selling. Mm -hmm. You know, I always wonder, like when Javier Fernandez went back to Spanish Nationals, does he kind of phone it in? You know what Some, I mean? Or yeah. is he really giving a top level performance? It depends they... on who you are and where you are. Because wasn't there, a... didn't he not make the final one year? Right? Javier. Did... Yeah, didn't he miss that? Yeah. 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 That last year, right? Like when he right. was that last year that he missed out. Whenever he didn't, because he it. had the fluke when Brian didn't go with him, and then it was was yeah. it because Brian wasn't there? So he had one oh really bad God, Grand Prix and one good so one. So mean to this Brian Orser. <laughs> 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 Love you, Brian. Leave him alone. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh my goodness. No. But um, anyway, I think yeah, I think for them it would be interesting for them if they maybe did that short again and again, like on an art on ice situation, because then they could get that and get the confidence and consistency. I did see that Weaver and Poge were in Christmas on ice. And I was thinking about that. I'm like, all right, when are we getting the, the hardcore training in with Igor and um, because with Igor and Pasquale, because now, they didn't. Do you think on a thing like Christmas on ice that you are dictated and you are only doing holiday music? Or do you think they are allowed to still offer their regular programs like they I were mean, supposed to? Maybe, but you're usually in like Thank a smaller Canada. rink. So for then I'm like, okay, are we really going for the national title or have we just kind of. Resigned ourselves resigned, to just trying to make the team. Make yeah. the team to, make, to, you know, just to get the funding and going. And, you know, and apparently Tessa and Scott will be doing another tour. We don't know what it is yet, but that's interesting for them to keep this moving forward. Also, we saw Chalk and Bates. They started posting pictures of them training. They trained at the uh, Olympic Arena from 76, um, where the French ice dancers practice on Wednesdays. So I thought that that was interesting that they kind of had that... Um, you can notice it's the pictures that they'll post from Gadois when they're with like the um, the soft boards because it's where the speed skaters practice. Mm. Um, so I thought that was interesting that they were there. So we probably we'll see them at nationals. They looked like they were had reemerged from like a blackout period where they were probably right, right. into. So well, and I mean, even it could be the same kind of situation. I, uh, Jean Luc and Caitlin have momentum you know, did make the finals, all that sort of thing. But they, I think it will still be easy for the judges to place Chalk and Bates ahead based on... I think their maturity and their experience with the patterns. And then Hawaii but it is... haven't been skating the pattern well. You know, they, they do look renewed, but I think that they lost a lot of momentum after he got a concussion and everything like that. So... Understandably so. You yeah. Know, I mean, they, they did make revisions that I thought helped the program, but I, I still think they are... Uh, safely behind Chalk and Bates in yeah. an overall uh, image. But we haven't seen what they're doing yet this season. Yeah. So it could be very different. And also, like, it takes time to get this in your body, as as was the case, clearly, with Gabby and Guillaume, because mm -hmm. seeing them now here, having mm -hmm. competed a Grand Prix already, I already thought the material had elevated a great deal for merely having just competed at all mm -hmm. once, you know. And if Chalk and Bates are doing, they're doing an Elvis free dance, and it's like the music that was done in that trio. Now, remember the tr in 98 Stars on Ice with like Katya, Kurt, and Christy, they did it? And Christy had on this, like, it was very 1998. So she had this <laughs> lavender, like, fuzzy sweater on that was like, cut off like right below the ribs and then like this silver skirt madison chalk should just borrow that she would look like heaven in it I yeah think, i'm sure yeah, she is a beautiful girl for sure yeah, yeah. so i it w just worked i thought that it was this whole that they're really kind of bringing back the 90s and ice dance with in the marie france camp i don't know what we think about yeah it, but... well so shulan <laughs> i mean yeah oof. so yeah i think that it was 
obviously very successful for James and Cypress. They could not have done much better after these two trips back to back. Um, certainly having a uh, the the throw lats maybe could have been a little better, but besides but we'll the, take it. We'll take it. It's dealing that. Um, <laughs> what are you thinking? We've seen the Papa Doc and Cicerone programs a couple of times now. What are you making? Okay. Of- so I preferred them much more this time around than I did the first time. Now, that could be me getting used to it. Mm-hmm. It could be also uh, more security in the material for themselves also. Um, I thought the rhythm dance, I was looking closely and like you see them trying to hit down beats hard. Do- uh, I see them overdoing it a little bit or an attempt to try to do it. Mm-hmm. And it is not quite working still. Would you agree? Yeah, the thing I noticed about, and I want to ask you musically, is that obviously they have to skate on the beats and everything has to happen on the downbeat of one on the pattern. Now, their music that they're using isn't like Stepanova's and Bukin, where it's like da 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 da, you know, yeah. on like one and three. So theirs, because it's, and it's a quick one, two, three, four that's happening. There's like, it's this like melodic thing that goes over the downbeat, but it's still in that time. It, and I'm like, I don't think it lends itself for them to... Just because technically the time signature is the same yeah. doesn't mean it will feel that way. You know, a yeah. waltz, no matter what you do in 3-4, you're going to get a bum, chuck, chuck, boom, chuck, chuck, yeah. dun, dun, dun. And in th- these things in 4, it doesn't necessarily mean that. So I, I really am going to dig in my heels and go back to what I said before mm-hmm. last week about the idea of having um, someone arrange music yeah. for the pattern because also in the pattern you see those downbeats are important mm-hmm. and it's not being matched in almost anyone's music mm-hmm. and so it seems like you're fighting the music already and mm-hmm. you're totally taking us out so the pattern isn't and elevating the program it's just fighting it and there are also quick turns and these mm-hmm. quick turns are these great moments that we would see in other people's like free dances for example mm-hmm with a musical leg, like bam bam or something, and that's why they've turned in there. Here it seems arbitrary. It's mm-hmm. like when those people are pantomiming and there's literally no music happening. So I was like, what exactly are you dancing slash skating to right now? Mm-hmm. There's no, none of that is telling you to do that. Yeah. So I just think all of these small moves would pop more mm-hmm. if someone had music that matched the, the pattern. Because I, really, I see like, them trying and it's I think it's a beautiful pattern when done to like the traditional music, right? Yes. Like the traditional tango music, when you see it from like the Vancouver Olympics or you see it like old school done by like Usman Zulin or, or Torvalin Dean, like they are interesting things. So why is done. everyone fighting the traditional music? Because everyone wants to be so current, but I think it's a mistake and no one is, everyone keeps mm. losing key points and half of the key point is that it's not held because remember it has to be the inside edge after the twizzle, the lady does the twizzle on the first key point and then they both hold an inside edge for four, but a lot of times they're not counting it for four and it's it's a weird timing thing and it's- But even this thing, like yeah. for you to have to suck yourself out of a performance and out of the craft at hand, because you have to be like, I have to count four, but it's gonna feel like a little bit of a faster four than what I'm like just naturally feeling without even understanding why I feel it. You're taking yourself out of it altogether, yeah. and I think it's just missing the point. And in a world where everyone is trying to be current and modern, mm-hmm. I, I dare someone to actually be traditional because I think all the PCS points would just be like mm-hmm. dumped onto that performance. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, now, what I will say about the twizzles and, mm-hmm. and these sorts of things, uh, she had some struggling moments, uh, mm-hmm. um, but as he would exit, Mm -hmm. the exits of his twizzles have like a breath like an exhale to them that i was just like this is so just next level yeah i was gonna say next level too um i was reminded about how last year we really would talk about tessa and scott and gabriella and guillaume as being just so far above the rest of the field and to me they're still there and they've just learned a new pattern like it just looks like and and they've gained new choreographic nuances and performance working with choreographers and performing in shows you could just see that extra little bit of um finesse that they wouldn't normally and it's that there was like a feeling of buoyancy there was like air under his arms that like lifted him up and out of it and i was like that's so easy to just see everyone you know just turn out and be done and go on to the next thing and that's where it just takes your breath away i do love the tango vibe and the tango character that they're portraying i think it's really strong and i know that a lot of people always would criticize them 
for being just one note in the free dance, but I have to say, I think that this is particularly strong. I think that the pattern is a different thing with the music matching it, but I think that their actual interpretation of the tango uh, could lend itself to another free dance in a season or two that would have an interesting vibe to it. I'm over tangos on one hand, but them doing a Latin type program or something would be interesting, I think. Well, because there's so water and wind to me in a hipster yeah. way, and this requires fire, which it seems less natural but they just as a default well. for them. But they're doing it. They're doing it. I think um, anything that requires a little bit of finesse, they do well, you know, and the mm -hmm. tango does. Um, yeah. I don't love the free dance. I, I love the idea of the free dance, but well, I don't love the music. Just before we leave the rhythm dance, yeah. what I do enjoy and would love to see them explore even more, you know, that like ending thing where they're wrapped in and then he creates the finish of the line. I love stuff like that on them. And the more they kind of do interesting things like that in those moments, I really appreciate it. The um, free dance, I, it's, I don't think it's um, iconic for them. No. But I do think that I enjoyed it very much and i wasn't sure i was going to ever enjoy it as much as i did this time i i do i do see it a little better and i see the quality of what they're doing if not always the innovation in this particular program i think that there are a lot of interesting things that they're doing and it's new movement for them and obviously the new requirements and i think that it's a new thing that'll push them and maybe keep them interested in dancing for the next four years i think also they're going to push the russians like hardcore and that's going to probably annoy them but yeah. um, it, it seems very reminiscent of when michelle was competing against irena um well yeah. i think that is going to start happening but i have to say that i think that um i just i don't love the music to me it starts from the music and i'm not interested in the music for four minutes well it, it just seems like everyone's it feels like in a way we're watching compulsory dances or the old original dances because it's as if this is the pattern this kind of emo lyrical are we at french thing. lilith fair like what's going on yes, yes with the piper piper and paul yes with the, all of these it's it's an approach and it's clearly you know it, the pendulum is always going to be swinging but i feel like there's quite a bit of this exact thing and so where it used to set them apart like unfortunately everyone's doing the same thing and i'm just craving for someone to break out and give me something I feel different like, for I, the time. I feel like we're in a, like an Oscar bait movie done by like the Weinsteins and we're like moving towards the third act and here comes the montage, you know, well, of to move the story along. The tear jerking, emotional, yeah, you know, instructive, yeah. Um, the music, the, and, and they even did a very funny moment about that in 30 Rock when they were like the power of adding music underneath anything. And then there's just a couple of casual glances, but they put in all this dramatic music under it and you're totally there. And I think these teams, they're getting a benefit mm -hmm. from that music. In the same way, if you're skating to like Rachmaninoff, I actually give you more credit than you probably deserve already. You know, because I'm love like, Rachmaninoff. Oh, yeah, and it seems to elevate. Symphony the of emotions, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My soul, it's just, it's like, ah, but um, I, I do, I do think there was something more exciting in them that they could have done, but I am enjoying this for its quality. Yeah. Um, I've been down the rabbit hole of the 94 pairs. I have decided that that's probably my favorite competition ever. If you were wondering. You know, I think so too. And we had a conversation about what clips do you show mm -hmm. non-skating fans, you mm -hmm. know, when you're trying to, mm -hmm. you know, do this. And sometimes people will be like, oh, I want to see the pairs where they throw them around. And even with all the amazing things that happened, mm -hmm. I'll show them Eliana and Bruno. I'll show them Sway and Han. But I'll show them Vanessa and Morgan. But I'm always going back to 94. <laughs> I think we need to do a judging video of it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe with Dimitri Megan and fight with I her. I love about that Rachmaninoff. Maybe uh, I Megan, do love the Dimitri Because you know Megan has a different opinion. And I think you have a different opinion than I do. And I would love to argue it with all of you until the end of time. So I think it could be fun. Maybe for the yeah. holiday season. Yeah, we each got a medalist in there. but We, we do. Just, we do. I love all three pairs that were on the podium, actually, for different reasons. So because all three were important to that competition, that sport being so interesting at the time. But yeah, I even love the fluff pieces. I'm all about it. Okay, so let's go to Spanish nationals. Um, now, really quick before we leave French nationals, yes. I would like to give a shout out to Kevin. Oh, because... I was just moving on my disciplines. Yes, let's talk about Kevin. Oh, oh, okay, sorry, sorry, yes. I didn't mean to leave but... France. <laughs> That's okay. No, because my transition. You were correct. Um, okay. Kevin Amos, Amos, how do we say his last name? Um, 
in the in America it would be called Amos. Um, hey, famous Amos. Yeah. Okay. Um, love that program. It. I so, am obsessed with the short, and I think it was a Guillaume. The short. I'm obsessed I loved with the it. Free. I'm I hate obsessed it. with what. <laughs> I love this about us right now. The free just, with the lunge and that he does around with all the cool movements and it looks like they totally... You only like that because you did a killer lunge in your program. That's no, you, he uh, does a pivot thing and I was like, I would love to do that. See? <laughs> yeah, but I have a completely different style of movement, Jonathan. I'm so like classique and he's more okay. like, you know... Yeah, I I was... They're scissor on knockoffs. They're scissor yeah. on like they're the same wood kid artist and Sylvia and John did it, and they stole all of the Papadox and Cizeron, like the leg with the lunge that's in that build But I thought, program. I thought Cizeron was working on it with him. I think he just visited the rink and like Sylvia stole it. She's a character, that, apparently. Sylvia. I know, and the, you talk about kiss and cry microphones. <laughs> France was on it. They practically had it like this in front of them. And actually, Kevin's behavior in the kiss and cry was not... Um, it, it didn't make me like him more. Yeah. What, is, yeah, what yeah. was he saying? He was very like, um, oh, well, it's in France, so who cares about the score? Because he was saying, like, they are all so inflated. Why would we even be excited about this score? But it almost seemed, almost. I'm sure mm -hmm. he's a, I don't know him. Maybe mm -hmm. he's a great guy. It, unfortunately, I don't know that he knew the mic was so hot, and it seemed ingrateful at the time, and, like, the kind of lead. They were kind of like, well... 20 point lead, I think that's what's fine. Or, you know, like, it was just a bit of commentary. I don't know that they would have shared had they known that they were heard so well. Yeah. But I thought the short program, I took it, I, I was having a moment. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was a little, it was a little, it was very derivative, but I loved it. It had personality, it had pizzazz, and he sold it like in that Jimmy Ma way. Mm -hmm. back at the Nationals where it is what it is mm -hmm. but he sold it and believed in it and he was doing the horns like this and it didn't even bother me because it was such a moment and I enjoyed mm -hmm. that piece immensely and then I thought when he tried to do it a bit more lyrically in the free I was less interested okay I just my I like the free, so I don't I know. Think great. So either, depending on who you talk to, he either has two great programs or two terrible programs. <laughs> but well, I think everyone, and it was a big win for him. It was it was an enjoyable skate, I thought. And May Bernice um, beat Loreen again at the nationals, so I think that was uh, interesting that she keep May Bernice. I think she's like her fifth national title that she pulled out. I mean, we feel like we've been watching her forever. And this is an interesting situation. I know Mai is like kind of one of those like sentimental fan favorites in a different way than like Mirai was a sentimental fan favorite because, um, you know, there are certain parts that are obviously lacking in the skating, but she seems like a great gal. She's got great pizzazz. I'm just curious if I'm Loreen, I'm wondering why I haven't overtaken this spot pretty consistently. And it seems it was so interesting with so much of Sylvia there. Mm -hmm. She's really got that French Federation wrapped around her finger, I would think, because she's got, why wouldn't you have gone there? What if you were Lord? I don't, I mean, I don't know with the te the technical, if, you know, maybe they didn't know if it was strong, you know, if, if it's like Jeremy Barrett can do like the, the jumps for like sow and double axle and, and toe, but you know, they're not really doing lots, you know, that all. I don't know. Yeah. Kevin Amos's jumps technique is wild, but he would have learned that before. So I, I don't know. I mean, who? Why? It just seems like at this point, if the judges um, wanted to go in certain ways, they could have. And now, wasn't Lorena, she dating more than ever. someone? I thought she was dating I, someone. And I then, didn't understand if that was real or if that was just kind of scuttlebutt that she went there know. for that reason, or it seemed like. A, but that wouldn't make sense either because she'd be in Colorado and he was not there. So I don't know. I don't know why she did the things that she did, but it hasn't seemed to be working out so well. And she literally looks like a Coriate impersonation when she walks out. Like it literally, you know, when you like you buy when you buy a dog and you guys start looking like each other. I I was like, wow, this is a thing where the coach and the student are really starting to look like each other. You know, Corey Aid at French Nationals is so right for me. Corey Aid and DDA together, that is just like so just perfect. Hanging. Just yeah. yes. But it's clear the Federation is offering Lorene no help whatsoever in mm -hmm. in terms of that kind of support. It, they could have boosted certain, they could have gone certain ways and they just choose not to. So. Well, I don't know. We'll say maybe. Uh, I don't whatever. know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Anyway, moving on to Spanish nationals. Um, have a lot of thoughts about um, the ice dance. Um, really interesting. So Smart and Diaz 
won the short, uh, won the uh, the rhythm dance, and they finished second overall. And w- watching their Beatles program again, which again is so flat, and the dress is flat, and everything is just like wrong. And she has such lovely positions, and it's just all wrong. And then you watch her Tato, and I was like, oh, her Tato is skating to Harry Styles. Um, and I was like, that's kind of the vibe that Olivia should be skating to because she's more current and young. And she really is. And, and that's and that's what makes me disappointed a little it bit doesn't about fit the packaging out of... The Hurtado yeah. music doesn't fit her. And I was just like watching. And I'm like, what's wrong with these teams? Because like Hurtado and Kavya <laughs> Lean like, don't look good together. And I'm like, Olivia would look much better with Sada's partner. And Sada and Adria should just go to a couple's counselor or get back together because they're both And just like, figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Then you wa- and then I went and I rewatched their program from the Olympics and from 2015 and I'm like, their lines just matched and they were so much more in sync and he just cannot get in sync with Olivia and I get the vibe that Sada's like a strong girl and I'm like, he and Hubble is a strong Don't girl. Don't you remember one of my most favorite kiss and cry moments ever was when they were doing one of those like summer competitions like up in Canada. It, maybe it was in Montreal or something like that. And it was like the, it was the one that ended them. It was right oh. at the beginning of that season. Do you remember? And she was full blown going at it, at, at them, at each other in the kiss and cry. And you were like, whoa, if this is what we're seeing. Okay. So are it girls from not. like Spain, like like full Spanish, like Spain, are those girls kind of like Italian women from Milan? Like, is it like a Sylvia Fontana? It's, like, it's that Mediterranean flow Roman, that's often depicted yes. in, there's a, re, come on, Carmen's a Spanish girl. Like, yes, come on, I mean, they, there's, there's an inherent fire that one associates with they Mediterranean culture. They just need to culture. get back together. I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry. Like maybe she's getting along, but like these two teams are just like, not, neither is really gelling. In a way. Well, when you really compare the two, watching them back to back in the rhythm dance, I know that there were twizzle issues were the reason Sarah was not in first. But it they're wasn't because technically you would. They just the way they just skate immediately. You were like, oh, next level. I get this the is vibe a- when I watch Olivia and Adria, and I'm like, you know, they they're working and they're semi focused, but like they're one of the teams in the ring, and you see them friends with all the other skaters. But I'm like. It doesn't look like they've decided that they're going to be champions yet. Like, they haven't made that mental, just like... They're missing that fire. Yeah, that next gear. And it just, yeah. it's... To me, your first free dance was the best one by so far. And that was all about Olivia. And, like, just, like, the lines, the GOE, like, it's just not there. And it's not getting better. Like, the Twizzles are getting better-ish. Like, they were a disaster last year with the different variations they were trying. And they've gotten better... But it doesn't look, it's just like year three, where is this going? I'm wondering, like what? Like the free dance is uninspired. The, the... Now let's talk about this for a yeah. second. Because when we first talked about the free dance, you explained to me like that whole like girlfriend spent the night in the boyfriend t-shirt kind of but they thing. they got rid and of then... it, you know? And, and why here's is the, that the thing. Beatles? Like why? I don't get Well, that. yes, why the Beatles? But then I started thinking, because I was like, okay, now that you say that, I think it's like when um, new television pilots are, you know, uh, decided by committee and they never work because they have to like, they're not true enough to any vision. So it just gets watered down and weird. I was like, I wonder if there was like a girlfriend in that t-shirt, sexy woke up and they're doing this kind of Beatles thing. Like, I wonder if there was more of a vision, but because they it's not all in, it becomes worse and worse the more they get away from the actual concept and you should just bail at some point. Because if, if you I get it now I if you started with like a sexy couple that just woke up after a fun night in the 60s I was Mm -hmm. like I got you but then he was but it it has lost its mission it has lost its mission statement and I think they're a team without a mission statement (laughs) you know what it also is is that Ice Dance is about romance and storytelling and all this stuff and you know even on the on the cover of Skating Magazine Hubble and Donahue they're like our our chemistry is fire or something along those lines I'm paraphrasing I don't get the vibe that she and Adria are like even close friends. Like I, I think just, they're coworkers. They're coworkers, but it comes across like like it's just not. They don't have, like, and they each have unique moments that they can use their bodies well. Like she has this stunning line and deportment, and this like amazing, almost like British Tessa Virtue like thing going on. He, but like with her own flair, he 
uses his body well when choreographed. Like he has that great slide where he hangs on to her in, in yes. the rhythm dance. Um, but together, it doesn't fit. Like it just like is like it? in the cutting edge when they're like I felt like I was watching two strangers skate together. <laughs> it's not that, but I mean I I feel like I agree with you entirely that yeah. it's just two people that were done this way. Even someone like Corval and Dean, right? Mm-hmm. Or even they someone, had a like connection. The sh- they had a friendship. They had a but... connection, even though it wasn't. Uh, I mean, a sexually charged one. You felt like they were still artists creating something together. And even yeah. the Shibutani's, who I had my own issues with their packaging. They were great technicians. And, and they were good felt together. Like, I just thought they were boring together. It had nothing yeah. to do with... But they created excitement through the virtuosity of their Twizzle sequence then to combat their inability to do some other kinds of connecting that other teams were capable of. And I'm kind of not seeing where that's happening with this team. Yeah, it's interesting. Because the issue with the Shibitanis was never that they were siblings in the ick factor. It was this, that they were so reserved as people in their personas and their programs. And it was so rehearsed. And like it felt planned. withheld or yeah. restrained when all we want, I, for was, me personally, is them to let I go. want the release. Yeah. Of, uh, that's what I stance is. It was um, never that. It was something else. And a lot of people didn't understand what our issue was. But to me, dance is movement, expression, you know, like it was control. It's soul. And yeah. I, I don't understand that the two souls we're talking about at this Spanish Nationals existed in the same event. But you go go watch Hurtado and Diaz at Sochi. Oh, and I was I, a huge fan of them always. Oh yeah. my god, that program was so interesting and like had such interesting yeah. shapes and I don't know. To me, it's like we're still skating for fun. Like we want to go to a Europeans, but I I don't see where this is going. Like I don't. I'm like, well, it's a bit that Ilinik and uh, Katsalapov, Katsalapov, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And so that thing they had some real momentum and some real possibilities. It didn't work, but now we're now finally we're seeing him reemerge. But I don't see an eventual reemergence on a high level from either of these. Without particular teams. you know, like Julian can push him as much as he wants with his judges, but it's just not there, you know. And yeah. it's an insincere rise of the ranks, I think, for them. And uh, uh, yeah, and I really love to watch Olivia and Adria, and I, I really like to watch Sada skate. But to me, like her line, like is like a shorter line and with a tall partner, and like I get it, but it's not really as impactful as it, it and i know that it wasn't i think marie france said it was not possible for them to continue skating together but i don't know i like, know it's so intriguing they they left a great deal of mystery around there but i mean again from that one kiss and cry at that uh, canadian you know summer event it was very clear something was wrong he seems like he needs that kind of woman though to kind of dominate him a little like he would do he very likes well. a strong woman yeah it's like, what, every time i no, every nice. time i sign into netflix it's like female st- strong leads yes. because that's what you like and i was like i guess you're right yeah so i guess he likes that and his partners so yeah. um yeah telling yeah i don't know it was just um i thought for her title ideas um oh i thought that they somehow i put that their second key point looked flat but i don't know if that was true, because I don't know, I didn't look at that. I don't know because what I was thinking. The real Hurtado Diaz in the rhythm dance, what really got them, I think, was okay. were, were those twizzles. So. H and D, but I don't know who I'm talking about. Anyway, I can't understand my own notes because it would be H and K. So I don't know what I was well, talking Hubble about. Well, Hubble and Donahue you were talking about. No, I don't think so. Whatever. Anyway. The, <laughs> my only other side comment about the um, Spanish nationals. Mm-hmm. Oh, first of all, I think it was Spanish nationals. The rink was on a street. And the windows of one entire wall of the arena were just open windows and you saw people walking by and like peering in to be like, what's happening in there? And I was like, they're national championships. And like cars would go by and like honk and you could see storefronts. It was a really interesting location. Was it Italy that still had the banners up from like the Universidad, Universidad in 2013? And Oh, probably, yeah. I thought that was a little... didn't do it in Lombardia again, but... Yeah. Um, the other thing about Spanish nationals was Javier Rea, mm-hmm. who did for for himself pretty well here. I think there is just it is one of the most fascinating axle techniques I have ever seen in my entire life. I don't know. It looks like he kicks a soccer ball and then does it like in, in the weirdest way when we talk about the step up or you know what I mean? Like kind of this launch forward. He's really just like kicking a hacky sack and then trying to do a triple axle. It's it's pretty remarkable that he lands it with that approach. So, you know, yeah. I think he should just stick to being an Instagram, like, 
travel blogger with his boyfriend and they could do that <laughs> whole thing like and i just they're just pretty and they can just we can just appreciate that the skating chicken thing it, is chicken it with javier rea because that's what it looks like when he jumps okay <laughs> oh my um anyway meanwhile <laughs> in me, italy meanwhile yeah. <laughs> in italy um our boyfriend mateo goris and nicole de limonica she is just not landing any of the jumps and it, it is yeah. becoming distracting yeah. it's um, yeah I mean, they're so lovely, but I was thinking, does this open the door if an American team can somehow get the momentum going? Let's say Alexa and Chris can find their, just their attack and their, their momentum and their, their, they, she has seemed to lack her usual fire, you know, like I would like her to, yes, Alexa, Alexa, like Alexa has not told anyone off in like months uh, on on Twitter or anywhere, and I would just like. She needs that release. Yeah, I think she needs like an angry text message at someone. Like I can volunteer or anyone, but I just feel like do, if they can get it together, we see that they're in Chicago this week. Look like they were working with Benoit, maybe working with Jeremy um, while they're working with Benoit. If she can just get it going again and get the confidence and get the spark by, and if they're sent to Worlds, could. Is this an opening? Because we need, the U.S. would need to finish in the top ten to get the two spots, and I'm wondering. And it'll be a tough. It's going to be a big ask. But and there because there are a lot of teams exactly like the Italians who are right in that mix. But yeah. I do believe at it, their core, Alexa and Chris have finer quality mm-hmm. than than uh, Della Monica and Guarizzi. But, but they had I don't... the consistency last year, or they were had the momentum last year. But they don't have it this year. This year it's. It's forced, and despite they're... their placements being better, yeah. because everyone else is missing. But like, it does seem, it does seem like something needs to happen for them. Yeah, but between it... now and Europeans, Europeans they they might really get buried. Yeah, it just like it just doesn't look like it's gelling, you know. And that I like the but music. Let me, yeah, let me tell you something that is interesting: is we watch a a, comp- a company, oh cheer, a country like Italy as it grows in its federation. Like we mm. are seeing, like they're kind of hitting a bit more in the the middle ranks across mm. a couple more disciplines now. And um, I was talking to my friend Leonardo, who was there, and he was saying, "Oh, he emailed were... me, your friend Leonardo. Yeah, he's, he's he's great about yeah. this uh, this Italian stuff." And he was saying there were five entries in the junior pair event, which of course, for something like the United States, we're like, oh no. (laughs) But he was like, in Italy, that number is astronomically high for a junior pairs event. You had Valentina come through, you had, you know, now you have Deli Monica and like all these people coming through. This is helping, Mm -hmm. I think, in in developing this kind of depth in these countries that usually put out a star. Yeah. I I think, and now with this team, team metal thing, they're working, it seems, these federations are trying to create um, just a depth across mm-hmm. their disciplines that, that seem to be doing well. Because they, they have some men that can mm-hmm. kind of accidentally hit a okay enough. You know, you never know what's happening with Carolina and that injury. I, I mean, obviously, she won't be in it for the next Olympics, <laughs> I, 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 but stranger mm-hmm. things have happened. But with the pairs, with the dance, they are creating a well-rounded team in Italy now. So you know how there's like the four nationals with like Poland and the Czech Republic? I would love to see France, Italy, and um, Spain. Germany, maybe. Yeah. Sp- Fr- no, maybe we could do another four nationals and put these um, these nationals together. It would be so much more exciting and interesting. And it yeah. just, you know, it would be great. Um, and it would, it, it would enhance the skating and the competitiveness. And they all have it the same weekend anyway. So... Well, suddenly you'd have an ice dance event with Sara, with mm. Olivia, with mm. Gabriella, yeah. and with the Italians. Like, yeah. it, it would be a very competitive field. Yeah. yeah. Genius. We're doing, we're solving all the I world mean, problems. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So the one thing that Leonardo emailed me about, because I felt so special, was about the men's event with Daniel Grossel, who is big on the Instagram. He does a great job of promoting his own brand and who works with Benoit. And then Matteo Rizzo, who was second, and I don't think was, you got the vibe that he was not happy about it. He's, well, he stormed off of the kiss and cry oh, without sorry. waiting. Oh, well. And the dad was like, oh, gosh, oh, oh, oh don't, oh, no, he's gone. So <laughs> it just, was definitely, yeah. So Daniel, obviously, he landed a quad lutz, a quad loop, triple axle, triple loop, triple toe, triple lutz, triple toe, triple flip, oiler, triple sound, triple lutz in the long. And look, he also did a quad lutz in the short. And he does do 
the jumps and they're great. But I was thinking about Mateo and trying to understand from his point of view, they're like opposite skaters because Mateo was just doing the triples, but he's got just beautiful skating skills. And just like to me, there was no comparison. It was yeah. like back at, meanwhile in Russia, like looking at Kolyada and Aliyev comparing yeah. it to Samarina and Voronov. It, it was yeah. this, it was Italy's version of this kind of battle. And it is tough mm -hmm. because I watched um, Daniel's short program first and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, good for him. And then I watched... Um, mm -hmm. Mateo. Yeah, and I thought, oh, this is leaps and bounds more as pleasing to me, I mean, and I enjoy this skating so much more. Daniel, to me, looks like he went to a Mishin summer camp and really focused on the jump technique, which mm -hmm. Kevin Amos should do, by the way. Yes. Um, he would start winning all these medals. Um, Daniel Grossel looks like he went and just like has not worked on the program at all or the skating skills in like six seven years i mean it's just... well and for you to even say then he works with benoit i was like none of that because benoit but i why think does does benoit, no things, benoit but... seems like he's becoming the choreographer to like the non-artistic people that want to look interesting that haven't worked like he works with like brady and cowrie and that's why i'm glad to see him work with aliona because he he and really... Aliona said that she's like, we don't really get to see his work performed yeah. at the highest level. And she's yeah. like, when you see the same movements mm -hmm. done by someone with more technical capabilities, yeah. there's now you realize what it can do. It's the same thing with, where Lori was delivering some programs that took my breath away and other programs. You're like, oh, gosh, I guess yeah. she needed the money or something, you yeah. know. I think Benoit brings the most out of the skater with the ability, but it just it looks that Daniel could spend some more time in that area because he has the jumps now consistently and he could be a force if managed well, properly. If you're if you're the Italian Federation, go send him to Barbara Fusopoli yes. or something like that. Like get some dance edge technical work kind of going and see see what can happen there because she's mm -hmm. done wonders with the Italian team. So the, the dancers Guinard that and make Fabri. Guinard and Fabri and he has a sister who skates. Anyway, um they really do hit the key points in the most traditional way. Barbara really has the most traditional rhythm dance pattern, and that's made them so competitive this year. And it benefits them because yeah. every, you have to do an old dance. Why are you constantly fighting its oldness? It's like, yeah. go there. Do it as authentically and as purest as you can. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to give a little shout out to Alexia Paganini, who should be skating in the U.S. So would really be helping us. I think she'd be our bronze medalist this year. Um, but I, she, I want to ask you, I think it's so interesting that we have seen a lot of programs to um, La La Land. And I know that you don't like the music, but I get, like, I don't think it's a bad choice for Alexia, like who she is as a girl. And she has a little thing. And I find that she is such a pretty girl and she has a lovely, like, quality on the ice but like she throws away her movements and she rushes i was just gonna say it's a bit a bit like marking she'll be like and then i'll do this here and then i'll kind of do that here and i i i missed the um the positive tension yeah. and i know in, jenny in has talked code. about her on her instagram story so i asked jenny what she thought and she said well i think that her coach must be heterosexual because she's just rushing through all of the movements and not seeing it and yeah. i just feel like she needs like a darker dress and was more iconic choreography because she does the da 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 they know those licks so the music that is quite nice for her skating and matches it but the program doesn't say anything and I thought like she needs a different dress and a different choreographer and like someone like Jenny to like work with her on just bringing out the sparkle and the pizzazz that it's missing. in every moment because yeah. these are real opportunities you know when you skate for a place like Switzerland you're gonna get a lot of time to. Yeah. To do all this at Europeans and all these other like extra things. She, she has a seat at the table automatically given her country and you'd like to see her really take advantage of that. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I think her skating You're not could skating go... to protect a, a position necessarily. It becomes a, a different kind of approach. She or could. could. She could get to the next level. Like there, it, She has Lutz issues for sure, but she could really get some of these points and really... Um you know, get GOE points and be competitive. But it's it's like, it's almost there, but there needs to be, you know. I'm a... wondering if something like that Grand Prix scoring at um, in her short program especially sends a message. You know, so much for these athletes must be like, oh, I do belong here. I, mm -hmm. I'm sure that there is that element for a lot of people. There are people who clearly think that they belong places they don't. Mm -hmm. But then there are also people you're like, 
I don't think they realize. Like, and that's what I always thought Raf was trying to explain to uh, Mikhail Brezhnev, to be like, if you would just do this, you can get all these medals. You could be in the final if you realized it. And I wonder if when the judges really go with her finally, she's like, oh, okay, yeah. I could do this. And it shifts the mentality going into maybe not so much later this season, but really the the next season to know that that's a possibility for her. Yeah, I'm curious to see what's going to happen with her. Uh, also, what's going to happen with Carolina Costner? Because we didn't see her at Italian Nationals. It's been very quiet on the Carolina front. Uh, but didn't she post a picture in the boot? She that did. was her, right? Yeah. So, and I think that said six weeks. So would that be out of Europeans? And I just wonder oh, sure. at what point, like, will she, I mean, I don't know, would she have enough time for Worlds? Um, and then, like, at what point are we saying, well, like... What is the motivation for your return? Because maybe if we understood it better, we would understand what you were looking for. I'm just for wondering, like, what is, what is feasible this year? Technically, will she come back next year? But, like, at what point are, is she competitive and at what point is she not competitive? Like, that's what, just what I wonder. Like, it'll be interesting now, to see, you know. do you think with even as watered down as her content could be, is Italy looking for her to at least try to get a 10th place or even just make sure they have a spot for Worlds the, the next year? I'm just curious at what point that's not even possible because if Russia gets three and Japan gets three and however many spots, you know, the U.S. would get, or depending on who is present, you know, like, is Gabby Dillman competing? Is she not? There are stories she's back right. in the rink. Is she not? Like, I don't know. Like, you start to, like, think, like, it's a clogged, it's a, you know, Alexi Paganini is there, and this one, that one, and I don't know. Right. I'm curious. I would love to see Carolina skate in a show, in a competition. I don't care. I want to watch her skate. I just want to see her. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me. I'll be watching her regardless. So... Yeah, I don't know, Jonathan. It's been, it's been quite the week of these mini nationals, but I think we should yes. combine them. I think it just would be better. I think so. Wouldn't that be easier for our viewing purposes? <laughs> yes, and why the French nationals? Did you notice that they were playing the arena the sound longer. and they were playing yeah. the music over the video? And it was See, so and then sometimes I wasn't getting enough of any sound, and so I was like really trying hard for some of the programs I was less familiar with. I was really trying to hear so I could understand what they were responding to, but fortunately the sound worked fine on Kevin's short program <laughs> now did you notice that today on the instagram uh it looked like papadakis and Cicerone and uh james and cypress were in petty and they were doing like at this beautiful outdoor rink with um this roof over it they were like filming stuff and there was like a fountain in the middle of the rink and i'm like just hold french nationals there it was far more can we just admit like paris wins like yes. come on <laughs> oh my god and you know that my favorite show um i'm a little upset because i just finished the second episode and we're leaving paris to go back to new york even though they may not have ever been in paris and uh, mrs Maisel. so i don't know it's oh i haven't started the second season yet but i did very much enjoy the first season oh you liked one of my shows oh okay i did look dave we got one yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> All well, of we the points. We both love Joan. We both love Joan Rivers, so there was always going to be something about this that brought us together. So. Oh, my God. I love the parents on this show, too. They're so great. So, yes, yes. Anyway, yes, what was your moment of the week, Jonathan? As we stare into our, our ball, what was your... Our, yes. What does it tell us, eight ball... Who will be the world champion in Paris? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, for me, my moment of the week was Kevin's short program. Really? You are just I, all... I, I really was on board for it. I, I understand what it is. Mm -hmm. I, I get what it is. But it achieved what it set out to do. And it had a point of view. And I enjoyed it for what Shut it was. Up, Michelle. You're distracting the skating lesson. Michelle, um, please. Gosh. <laughs> I have to say, I thought Vanessa and Morgan, just seeing them hit that of program course. to complete yes. potential is just really fun to watch. That program, that wicked game. It's just, it's everything this season. It's so. We just want to remind you to hold an edge and look sexy, and I will be getting the Kimmy Meisner interview out uh, this week. It's a long one, and we had starts and stops, and oh, like a hundred. Remember that? Yes. I don't, she was in a vortex of no internet. It was funny. <laughs> it was a funny, funny backstory. It took like four and a half hours to film. So yes, we'll be getting that this week. So as always, hold an edge and look sexy. Bye, guys. <laughs>